Happy Easter, everyone! And daddy, Daddy, wait! You can't do an Easter video without these. That's perfect, Daddy. Happy Easter, everybody! Happy Easter! Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Nick's Six. A special episode of Everybody Loves English with me, your English teacher, Mr. Nick. Why do I call it Nick Six? Well, that's because Nick Six are special episodes where instead of one idiom, I'll be teaching you six important vocabulary words, idioms or expressions that somehow are associated with the special event or holiday we will be talking about today. And I'll also be giving you a little information on what this special day is all about. Nick Six are videos about things that everyone living in North America and learning English needs to know about. Today's subject is Easter. Easter is the biggest holiday for Christians. It's a religious holiday that celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now that we know that Easter Sunday is a very important celebration for Christians celebrating Easter, we need to also take a moment to learn about Good Friday too. Good Friday marks the day that Jesus was crucified, which means nailed to a cross until he died. Since Jesus was killed on a cross, the cross has become the symbol of Christianity. Easter Sunday reminds Christians of the miracle of Christ's resurrection just three days after his death. Christians everywhere go to church, they pray, and spend time with family and close friends to celebrate Easter. As I've mentioned throughout this video, Easter is definitely a religious holiday, but it also has a non-religious side too. As you've probably seen in some of my recent videos, the arrival of spring is very important and celebrated all over the world with various other holidays too. No Ruz, Holi, and Passover, just to name a few. So where does the name Easter come from anyway? The word Easter comes from the ancient Anglo-Saxon goddess of fertility, Esther. And seeing how rabbits are a very fertile animal, the bunny became an important symbol for Esther and later a very common and traditional symbol for Easter. I'll tell you more about that Easter bunny a little later. A very long time ago, people would enjoy spring festivals each year to honor Esther and to celebrate new life and the rebirth of nature. Flowers and plants begin to reappear all over the world after the long cold winter months and birds come back and build their nests. Since the resurrection of Jesus happened during the early spring, these two celebrations will always be closely associated. Nowadays, little bunnies and chocolate Easter eggs are a very popular part of this holiday. The white lily is also a symbol of rebirth, as well as the traditional Easter flower. Many cultures also enjoy baking and eating delicious pastries, such as hot cross buns. If you've never tried them before, I highly recommend that you visit your local bakery and try them. You'll thank me later. When you think of Easter, there are many symbols associated with this special holiday. Lambs, chicks, and bunnies, as well as other baby animals. They all symbolize the start of new life. The egg has always been a symbol of new life. They are usually painted, dyed, and decorated in bright colors that remind us all of the beautiful spring colors. Exchanging eggs as gifts has been a tradition for many centuries. Because of its springtime symbolism, it's actually been going on long before Easter even became a Christian holiday. Eggs are also used to play games and enjoy some friendly Easter contests during spring festivals. Egg tossing and egg rolling contests are very popular in many countries. 
The Easter Bunny is nothing new. It's been around for a really long time. Some say even longer than Easter itself. Nowadays, in many Western countries, the Easter Bunny has become a cute little Easter mascot that goes around hiding chocolate eggs for children on Easter. He's like Easter Santa Claus. Fun fact, the first edible bunnies were made in Germany in the 1800s. And everyone knows you have to eat the ears first. Nowadays, Easter egg hunts are all the rage with kids at Easter time. Children in many Western countries wait for the Easter Bunny to deliver chocolate and candy Easter eggs to their homes on Easter Sunday. The Easter Bunny hides them and kids run around their homes and yards looking for their special Easter treats. Now that you know a little more about Easter, it's time for Nick's Six, so let's get cracking. Idiom number one. Cross my heart and hope to die. We use this expression when we make a very strong promise to do something. This expression is often used by children, but adults can use it too. Adults usually use it in a humorous way to prove that they're not lying to you. They're being sincere and honest. Let me give you an example. The parents came home from work and found that all the cookies were missing from the kitchen. When they asked the kids what happened to the cookies, the kids said, we have no idea. Really? Cross our hearts and hope to die. Idiom number two. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. This is an expression I often use myself. It means to start thinking about something or to make a decision about it, but only when it's necessary and when the time is right, but not before that. Let me give you an example. The students are asking the teacher about the exam, but it's only the first week of classes. The teacher tells the students to not worry about the exam at this moment. He says to them, right now, you need to focus on learning. The exam is in two months, so we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Idiom number three, to have egg on your face. When someone has egg on their face, it means that they did something that made them look foolish. Basically, they're embarrassed. Example, Robert is a young politician trying to become the new mayor of his city. He was recently left with egg on his face when he forgot all the words to his speech during his election campaign. Idiom number four, don't put all your eggs in one basket. This idiom suggests to avoid investing all your money or your efforts in one company or in one thing because you can lose everything. It can be used in many other ways as well. Here's an example. Samantha retired last year and invested all the money she saved over the years in various companies and different stocks. She decided to not put all her eggs in one basket. Idiom number five, to be walking on eggshells. This expression should remind you of another expression, to walk or skate on thin ice. It means to be in a very delicate and probably uncomfortable situation. A situation where you feel that you have to be very cautious, especially about the things you say. Here's an example. Jennifer is always walking on eggshells when her mother-in-law comes to visit them. Idiom number six, to wear or to have on your Sunday best. This expression means to dress up in your nicest clothes. Normally, most people don't have closets full of fancy clothes, 
but most Christians who attend church on Sunday mornings will save their best clothing for going to church. Here's how we use this expression. I was recently invited to attend my new boss's birthday party. I want to make a good impression, so I'm planning to wear my Sunday best. If you enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and click subscribe and remember to hit that little bell too so you can get notified every time we upload new videos. I want to wish everyone who is celebrating a happy Easter and a wonderful spring. Keep watching our videos, writing your comments below, and remember to share these clips with family and friends. You know why? Because everybody loves English. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Mmm, the ears really are the best part. Mmm, Daddy, these ears are the best part. They really are.